Hey, is this thing on? Hey, what's up guys? Hey, welcome everybody back to the Worship Team Training Podcast. I'm Brandon Dempsey. Thanks so much for uploading us and downloading us into your device and your podcast set list. And it's great to be back with you. Uh, it's been a while and I wanted to come back on to let you know that we have a lot of new things that are coming and a brand new podcast that we're going to be unleashing this January after the new year. But until then, I wanted just to come on and say hello and to share with you what's been happening to me uh, throughout this journey. I think the last podcast episode we put out was uh, February and also March. We had the last one with Paula Walsh, and that was mainly just a throwback. And there's been a lot that's transpired, both uh, with me personally, um, ministerially, and I just wanted to bring you up to speed on the things that I've been learning. And it's simply this, I'll start, there's um, a few things I wanna share. Point number one, I was burnt out. Now for a long time, you guys heard me talk about the importance of keeping yourself in balance with ministry, the life that you live, uh, well, and that sounds kind of funny, the life that you live, it sounds, it sounds already segmented. Um, and, but that's the way I perceived it. Um, I had seen that family life was this way, ministry and church was this way, friends were another, and to my understanding now, even though I've been saying this, that all of it is connected, all of it is whole, all of it is, all of it is one. But I don't know about you, but for me, life seemed pretty segmented. And I didn't enjoy the way that it was going because basically, as the more I spoke about burnout, the more I was becoming burnout. And finally, I did. I just had to disconnect myself socially and also redock and connect with family and to connect back with God in a way that I hadn't for a long time. And during that time, I had seen Jesus do many things in my life to unlock a lot of doors and to just to get back to basics. I began this trail about three years ago, and even more, it's impacted me. I guess just the older that you get, you live life in um, two kind of perspectives or three rather, um, where you've been, where you are, where you're going. And I love what Bob Goff had said in his new book release that it's not about, I think we spend too much time looking forward and also looking back, but we never have enough time to look down. We don't look down as to find ourselves in where we are. And I needed that time. I needed that time myself. So I was grateful and so humbled uh, that you guys come and download these podcasts. And even though we've been off for quite a bit, you've still been downloading the cast anyway. You've still been listening and wondering, where's this Dempsey guy? What's going on? But I will tell you that throughout that journey, um, God is doing amazing things by um, helping us learn to look at where we are. And for me, I had to take that step out of where I was and where I thought I was going and to be centered, to be here, to be present with my family and present to God and to show up simply, to show up to God and say, hey, I'm here. And to not be tasseled by the whims of ministry or the church, um, by the pastor, by you know all these other different things. And I wanna be speaking more into that. So what God has done through me is share this scripture verse and, and put this in my heart again, Luke 6, 12. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When was the last time that you took a walk with Jesus? When is the last time that you went somewhere else on the other side, away from people? When it says a mountainside, uh, it must take some time to walk that trail to get to that place. We're not talking, you know, sometimes we can read that scripture and think, oh, mountainside, maybe he went behind a rock or a tree. 
No, it says a mountainside. There was a journey that was involved. We don't know how long that was. Scholars may know, but it just intrigued me that Jesus himself took time to journey to be where he was supposed to be with God. And I found that remarkable too, that it spent the night, he spent the night praying to God. So not only was it a long journey, not only was he must have been tired from that journey, but he spent his last and the next day, I'm sure, first energies with God the whole night praying to God. So falling asleep, waking up, so forth. When was the last time that your prayer was longer than just the bedtime sign off from the day to God? And I know for me, I've been running on fumes. I've been trying to do everything that I could with the ministry and it just it, it got to the point where even though it was segmented but yet I felt like I was bleeding through different areas and I was not taking care of the things that God called me to to be present on the other side of the mountain with him and God had to take me on a journey to walk away and during that time you know <laughs> Like everybody else, we've been experiencing the, the weird chaos of 2020 and the pandemic. And then now we thought 2021 was going to be better. And little surprise, it was only just like a half step to where we were. And, you know, we thought things were going to get better. We, we have more bad news. It's just coming from everywhere. And during that time, we found solace. And at the same hand, we got caught up in the real estate market so that we moved and it was only just a little bit further away from where we were but where we are now i would just say that god has done a remarkable thing by not just a physical location of the move but a movement within my heart my wife's heart my children's heart our heart as a family and it caused me really just to take those moments to slow down um, we needed space we needed uh, we need in our lives scenery. We need beauty to see God all over again. And I couldn't do it where I was. I, I had to break out. And another scripture came to mind that God put on my heart, Mark 4, 35, that says that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let's, let us go over to the other side. It's almost the same fashion of walking over to the mountain but now this time Jesus is uh, public with his disciples and he's urging them as a, as a team, as a group, his family, his close-knit friends, his disciples, come, let's journey together. Let's do this together. So I felt like in this location of move with my family, it was like now God was saying to me, okay, Brandon, pick up your family now and let's move together. Let's move to a time that's more meaningful where you can hear me. So along that way, uh, of course, we're thinking things are fine, but uh, there are some health concerns that my family had, and we had to take care of that as well as um, issues with COVID, and uh, that was not fun at all. The, the, the mask wearing that was happening, the, the school board meetings, as you guys have seen in the news, and uh, all the politicization that's been everywhere. And you know, no matter what side you're on, it's just draining. And so we're going through that time, we're trying to recover from family health and everything. And then I get the worst news about my family, the passing of my father. And my father had died at a um, kind of an old but yet young age. And being only at 79, that's really not too old when you think about others who have lived longer and they're still spry in their 80s and so forth. My dad wasn't. Uh, he was taken by stage four cancer and it happened almost immediately uh, as far as our knowledge of it, but it's been ongoing for long, longer than what we realized. My dad came from the generation of not wanting to tell anybody. Uh, that builder generation has, not everyone, but they had a tendency to keep things close to the vest. So we never knew what was going on with my father. And uh, with all that happening over just this past summer, and he actually died on the, the, the day of his birthday, actually. 
And for me, that, that just took completely the wind out of my sails. I thought that like the pandemic, we're kind of coming out of it. I thought things were getting better with our family. And then like the pandemic, now my father. And so going through that was probably the most um, excruciating emotional pain that I've been through. My father and I weren't really close, but I did and I do love him. In fact, I'm writing a book about that and I'll reveal that to you later. I've been talking about that for quite some time because this book has now taken me into the third year of writing. So I'm very excited about this new project. But in that storyline, I talk about the relationship between my dad and I, uh, the faults of it, the fractures of it, and where we are today, coming out from a divorced family from eons ago when I was six years old, and, um, and I have an abusive background in which that took away my childhood. So all of that come together now, and here I am a worship leader, and I'm, I'm busy, and you know we, uh, we're living here in Austin, Texas, and, and things are great, but yet things are so uh, heavy, and God really used that time to unplug me, which I thought was happening back in January. Now I'm having this time to truly connect with family with, um, in ways I never had. And then it caused me to really think about life events and ministry. How do life events like this affect who you are? Number one, just as a believer, as a worshiper, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a mother, as a spouse. Um, how can we spiritually pick up these pieces? We can't. That's only the job that the Holy Spirit can do. But I would tell you, there are so many times that I've had in just morning sips of coffee with my wife on our back porch, looking out and seeing our children play, so many times that God has given me the vision, the vision and, and word is saying, Brandon, I got you. I got your family. Just like how I have all of my people, you're one of them. And that alone took me through a lot of process of healing, which I'm so grateful for today. And I'm continuing to heal. I'm continuing to grow. I don't think that um, healing doesn't stop. It just continues and it becomes bigger and more beautifying. And 2 Corinthians 1.4 was put to me, again, God whispering in my ear. The scripture says, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. That to me, friends, is from my life and my perspective, why I've gone through so much. Because now that I've been through it and I'm, and I'm going, still going through it, I can now share that same comfort that God shared with me. And even you watching this, the video or listening to the podcast by audio, you may be in a place right now in your life where you need to hear those words being spoken, you're not alone and that it's okay. I'm very um, avid about talking of, on these topics in our normal podcasts anyway, but God has just given me a, a new step to take and, and almost a new message. So things are gonna be a little bit different in the upcoming podcasts and, and, and videos, the upcoming messages. And right now I'm, I'm getting a, um, a text that I need to go pick up our sons from school. So um, I'll wrap up here. But it's about living in a new way. So I say to you like what God put on my heart, I encourage you brothers and sisters, take more time to breathe. Take time to breathe. Take time to be relocated. Take time to go on the other side of the mountain. No rushing. Reconnect. Reconnect with who you are in Christ to God through Scripture. Put everybody else first. Put yourself last. These are a lot of the things that I've been learning along the way and continuing to be a student of. Um, ministry music will always be here, but people won't. People won't, and you won't either. Uh, so remember how... How, we, how will, put it this way, how will you remember people? And then how will they remember you? So those are my thoughts that I leave for you. Um, thanks so much for coming and, and being a part of my journey. You're special to me. All of you who've sent emails and comments on our socials and 
uh, the podcast downloading and everything. We really appreciate that. Uh, look out for new things coming with old buddy Rich Kirkpatrick. We got great friends that are going to join us on the cast. Uh, I can't wait to reveal who they're going to be. Are just to name a few: Jared Anderson and uh, Christy Nordoff and many others. And um, I can't wait for this journey that we can all step in together as we go together with God. So thanks, guys. I love you. And see you back next here, next time here on worshipteentraining.com and our podcast. Check us out. Share us out on socials as well. And uh, share the love. And thanks so much for that. We love you. See you guys soon.